Hello, and welcome to Friday STEAM uh, with the Warren County Library System. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I am your Makerspace Coordinator for the library. Uh, normally, we'd be at Southwest or one of the other branches doing fun STEAM projects on a Friday night, but right now we're coming to you online every week at 4 o'clock um, through Facebook and then archived on YouTube. So I'm really excited to get to be with you here today so that we can have a little bit of science and technology, engineering, math, and art fun, right? That's what we're here to do, to learn a little bit, to create something new, and to have a good time. Okay, today's project. Today we are going to be learning a little bit about air pressure. We're going to be learning a little bit about density, and we are going to be making our own upcycled water bottle fountain. So let me show you what that looks like. I've got my big beaker, okay? And you know, there's a, there's a joke, right? You know, are you a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of person? You know, are you a glass or a beaker half full or a beaker um, half empty? And here's the thing, for scientists, it's always full because it's half full of water and half full of air. So all of our beakers are always full as scientists. Here is our project today. Okay, this is our balloon powered fountain and it's made out of a little water bottle and I'm going to demonstrate it and hopefully not manage to get this water all over myself. Cross your fingers for me, folks. I'm going to release. There we go. And you can see that the water is coming out of our fountain into our beaker. <laughs> So that's pretty fun, right? But how does that work? What do you think? How is it that this balloon of air is forcing the water out of our fountain? Well, to understand that, we need to understand a little bit of science. So let's talk about that for a sec, because this is some really important stuff. So as I mentioned before, is it half empty, half full? Neither, it's 100% full, just with two different things. The water on the bottom is more dense. And that basically means that it's got more weight, more mass for the same volume. The way you could think about this is that if you had a garbage bag full of feathers and you had to carry it for a mile, no problem. Feathers aren't very dense. They're mostly just air. So you can carry that garbage bag full of feathers easily. But if it was a garbage bag full of bricks, it's going to be a lot heavier. You're putting a lot more mass in the same space. So even though they're both the same size, the same garbage bag size, one is going to be much harder to carry than the other because the bricks are much more dense than the feathers. Well, it's kind of the same thing. Water is more dense than air. So the water is heavier and it falls to the bottom and the air rises above and kind of lays on top of the water. But it doesn't mean that they don't both take up space and it doesn't mean that one doesn't have mass and the other does. Air still has mass. It still takes up space. We just are so used to walking through it, we don't think about it anymore. So in the case of balloons, this balloon right now, the air pressure outside of the balloon is more than the air pressure inside of the balloon. So the balloon is collapsed. But if I add pressure inside by pushing air into the balloon, that air will take up space, right? So that balloon now is filled with air and that air is taking up space. And all those little molecules are bouncing around inside the balloon and keeping the walls pressed out. Now the pressure inside the balloon is more than the pressure outside the balloon because I filled it with more air. And that air now is a little bit more dense than the air outside. There's literally more molecules or particles of air inside the balloon than outside the balloon. And that means that it's going to be a little more dense. Like you can feel it. I can feel the density of that, that air. Whereas if I, if I do that, I don't feel anything. If I do this, I can feel it because it's a little more dense and it takes up that extra volume. Okay, great. So this diagram is a little hard to understand. It's a lot going on, but if I have this, I have my molecules on the inside bouncing around. I have the molecules on the outside bouncing off of the balloon and I can keep on adding more. More molecules of air, but I don't only fill this. I can fill this balloon in other ways. I can make this balloon get bigger in other ways. And these are some really important, what we call gas laws, ideal gas laws. If I were to take this balloon and tie it off and put it in the freezer, 
what do you think might happen? Well, what will happen is the molecules of air, the particles of air bouncing around are going to lose energy. They're going to slow down. They're going to basically start to condense a little bit. Their density is going to become less. They are going to take up less space because they're not moving around as much. And this balloon will actually shrink. Don't believe me? Try it this weekend. Get a balloon, blow it up, stick it in the freezer, see what happens. In the same way, if I were to put this balloon over a candle like it shows in my picture here, if I were to put that in over a candle, the balloon would get the energy, the thermal energy from that heat from the candle, right? And those little molecules inside would start getting really excited and start jumping around and flying around more. And they will push on the outside of the balloon even more. So those excited molecules start pushing and pushing and pounding and pounding and pounding. And the balloon will actually expand just a little bit. And you can test that with a parent's permission by doing exactly that, holding it over something warm, like a light bulb or a candle, carefully and far away from the heat source. Cause you know, we don't want to put it too close and then pop the balloon. Measure the balloon before you warm it up, measure it after you warm it up, and you'll see it will expand just a little bit. And this is why they say heat rises, okay? Warm air is actually less dense. It's spread out a little bit and it rises above colder air, which is more dense because molecules are kind of packed in a little bit more. So we can use this to make our fountain. And what I mean by that is that all the pressure that I now have stored in this balloon or in this balloon, right, is has to go somewhere if I, if I let it go. Ready? <laughs> that never gets old, does it? All right, so if I fill up this balloon with air and I release it, it has to go somewhere. The only place it can go is down into our bottle. Now, if our straw wasn't there to relieve that pressure, this bottle would just expand too. It would get pressurized. It might even burst. But we have given it this drinking straw. We gave the liquid a place to go. And as you know, liquids and air, gases, they will always go, what we, they will always follow what we call the path of least resistance. So rather than staying in a high pressure situation, they're gonna leave. You can kind of think of it the same way if you're in a really crowded room, it gets hot, you're getting jostled around. Don't you want to walk outside where it's cooler and you have more space? Well, the water in this bottle wants to do the same thing. So when it goes under pressure, it's like, aha, I found a place to go and out the straw it goes, creating our fountain. So that's the science behind our project today. And I think it's a really neat concept. Now, of course, you can go crazy with this and redesign it. Can you have multiple fountains? Can you, you know, what size balloon gives you the best um, spray? Can you create this in a situation, Huron's fountain, where it's perpetual, where there's constantly pressure going around? But we're gonna start with a really simple one. So we're gonna switch on over to the document camera. Oh, but first, I should probably tell you what you need to make the project, right? That'd be a good idea, Sandy. All right, I'm going to move my giant beaker a little bit. And here we go. You can kind of tell what the, the supplies are already. You are going to need one disposable water bottle. Doesn't have to have the cap. Save that to make wheels for a car or something. You're going to need a pair of scissors. You're going to need a drinking straw. I like the kind that bends because it gives, lets me aim my fountain. Um, can be paper. You can use a metal um, straw if you have one too. It's, you know, you just take it out when you want to reuse it, wash it up. Um, I happen to have these that were donated by a restaurant, so I'm using them because I don't want them to go in the garbage. Um, you're going to need a balloon. Okay, these are, I think these are 9 inch. Oh, these are actually 12 inch, but a 9 inch balloon will work. Pretty much any balloon will work. It's just a matter of how much pressure you're able to put into your bottle. And you're going to need a little bit of duct tape. Or if you have some Play-Doh or clay, or even if you want to use a bit of glue, you can use glue. We just need to be able to seal up the hole we're going to put in this bottle. I find duct tape works pretty, sim pretty well for that, but you can use other ways to seal it up. All right, now we can go over to the document camera and see how we're doing. And while we do that, I'm going to just do a quick check and see if anybody has any questions. Um, just going to do a real quick check. Any comments, any questions? Nope, we're good. Okay, so here we are. I'm gonna move my caps out of the way, put my supplies over here. I'm gonna start with our bottle. Um, and look, I set up a camera now so I can say hi to you while we're doing this. Isn't that fun? All right, it's just my cell phone. Anyway, got my bottle, got my bottle, right? About a third of the way down, I need to put a little hole. So the way to do that is I'm going to just squeeze it, take my scissors, and I'm just gonna clip in there just a little bit 
The smaller scissors, the better for this, to be honest. You want to keep this hole as small as you can get, okay, and still have it, you know, be there because the bigger hole that you make, the more you have to seal up later, and that's just going to take you extra time. So there we go. I don't know. Does that show up well? I'm going to zoom in for you, see if you can see how, how that looks. Can you see the hole? Where's my hole? There it is. Can you see it? And you notice I already took the paper off. Okay, so there's the hole. Great. So that's all we need the scissors for. I'm going to pick my straw and I'm just going to slide the straw in to my hole like that. Now notice I'm putting it close to the bottom, but not all the way to the bottom. You want a little bit of space there. Okay. And like I said, you can bend this to direct your water. Now I'm going to get my duct tape. I like to use small strips for this because again, I want to seal this up as well as I can. So I like to start from behind. And again, you may have a totally different way of doing this. That's fine. I'm going to wrap around like this. Okay. And this is where if you want to use glue and let it dry or use hot glue. Care. One second. I just sent that going. Can I get it? Sorry about that. Okay, now I'm going to come from the other side and wrap my tape around there. Just press that all in. Just be careful that you don't um, like squish your straw closed. Like check to make sure that you haven't closed up your straw. The pressure should do the job and, and still open it back up, but double check. This, the reason you want to make sure that this is sealed up is because once you put it under pressure, if this isn't sealed up pretty well, guess where the water is going to go? Yeah. It's going to go right on out around the straw. And for that same reason, when we fill it up, I usually fill it up under that level. And I'm just going to, like I said, I'm really going to do my best to seal this up really well. Um, oh, and what I was saying about the hot glue, you can use hot glue, just you want to use low temperature hot glue and just, uh, just enough. Because if you use too much hot glue, you're going to end up with a situation where um, you're going to melt your bottle. Don't want that. Clay is a really nice option here. If you've got some waterproof clay, like modeling clay, nice, nice option. Okay, so there we go. I've got it all sealed up now, right? Pretty simple. Squeeze that down. Excellent. There's my bottle. Now I need um, to actually add water to my um, bottle. I happen to have a bin of water over here, so I'm going to go ahead and just do that. Sorry, you can't, this is off camera. So I'm gonna grab my balloon. Okay, ooh, I really filled that one up. Ooh, this one's holding really nicely. Good job, Sandy. All right, throw the towel here. Let me dry it off just a little bit so I don't make too much of a mess because I'm working inside. This is a really fun project to do outside. Let me tell you, I've got a little bit of a leak. Not too bad though, all right. Okay, so now, very simple. This is a spot where if you happen to have paper clip, Paper clip is really helpful because it will um, give us a chance to seal up our balloon. But I'm just gonna blow up my balloon and twist it. Okay, I'm gonna twist that neck. And I'm gonna put my paper clip or my um, clothespin on the neck so it's sealed up. Now I'm gonna come in here, stretch. Oh, making a mess. Stretch my balloon. Okay, can you see that? I stretched it over the neck of my um, bottle, and we're good to go. All right, I'm going to come on over to the other camera so that we can test out our fountain. Do -do -do. All right, ready? Moment of truth. Get my beaker back. And release the clothespin. Now, as you can see, I've got a little bit of a leak going on, but not such a big deal. Goes for a pretty long time, right? And so you can maximize this. You can figure out how much water do I need to have in here? Where should I place this to get the maximum pressure? Because the truth is, the more water you have in the bottle and the more air you have in a balloon, the more force it's going to generate. And especially if you seal this up really well, you're gonna get more force for your fountain. So that's part of the prototyping that you're gonna to wanna to play with. So you might wanna have a couple of water bottles and a couple of straws so that you can really test. 
and figure out what the best solution is for you. Now, once you've got the basic thing um, built, this is where you get out your fun duct tape, you get out your stickers, you get out your permanent markers, and you can decorate this all up and make it look amazing. So you have a beautiful fountain too. And to refill, just pop off your balloon, refill your bottle, and you can go all day with this. It's a ton of fun. We used to do these at the Belvedere pool every year, and they were always a great time. And next year, hopefully, we'll be back to doing exactly the same thing for Science and Swim. Okay, that is our project for today. Thank you so much for joining me on this rainy day. Maybe this will be something fun that you can do since you can't really be outside too well right now. You can go on up to the bathroom, make a bunch of fountains and play, right? Um, so I will see you again soon. Remember on Mondays I have at noon Maker Camp. That is a Zoom class where we all get together and build together. We are doing Fix It Fairy Tales where we are using famous fairy tales and sometimes not so famous fairy tales from all around the world that really feature makers and engineers and then we recreate and try and solve the problems that they had to solve. So that's at noon. You can register for that at our website. Let me put up our website for you. Um, uh, www.warrenlib.org um, so you can check that out register for that and you'll get the zoom link and then at two o'clock is maker monday where i come to you with a fun maker project so you can invent and have a good time with that and then at 3 p.m this upcoming monday i have a introduction to make code make code is a really neat programming language a drag and drop programming language but what's cool about it is it lets you prototype small robotics and electronics it also lets you make really cool games so it's a really fun way to code and if you've never tried it before join me at 3 p.m. that's a zoom class and I'll also be putting up a little introduction video in case you missed the class you can register for that on the website and then of course Wednesdays are Lego lovers and our treps program and Fridays I'll be back with another Friday steam Make sure you tune in at five o'clock as well because Tool Time will be premiering. Today we're learning all about screwdrivers. It's more interesting than you might imagine. Did you know we've been using screwdrivers since the 15th century? It's pretty neat. Okay, I'm gonna let you go. Um, make sure you check out our website, register for summer reading, see all the amazing stuff that we are offering online. We can't be together in the library quite yet, but we will soon. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and make something new. Take care, guys. Thank you.